Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Marwell Manor Farm and the Crowdsource Challenge. We are in a John Deere Combine. Which means that we're doing field work again. I know I said in the stream yesterday that the plan was to do some mowing, but while I was fast forwarding to get the rain stopped and make sure there was no other weed problems after field 19, um, yeah, this happened. Field 18 has grown. Uh, as is field 19, but I'm going to leave field 19 for now. We're going to do field 18 first. And uh, that means it is time to do the oat harvest. Also, I'm going to be spamming the John Deere because it feels right having a John Deere tractor unloading a John Deere combine, I'm going to be honest. The fast track can run the baler, though. I will, I will George Saunders the, uh, the bailing. But, uh, for now, we're gonna be John Deere-ing this up, and I should maybe actually start the other, yeah, I'm gonna start the other side of the field. Because it has been pointed out to me on a few occasions that you actually want to do your first headland with the combine, or with the pipe of the combine pointing in towards the center of the field. Because, and I'm going to use the grass field to turn around here, field, field 15, which is now grass, uh, with a bizarre little muddy bit at the outside, but that's fine. Uh, that'll work, I guess. That saved a bit of time laughing about. <laughs> Just peeled the header off. Okay. The header trailer can go back here, because we'll be needing this to get to field 19, and I'm going to try and use the header trailer as much as I possibly can. But, we need to grab the Brown, and then we'll actually sort the combine out. Um, and I do hope to use GPS for this harvest. Um, not in this video, but um, during the next couple of streams. <laughs> oh. This is the plan. I will be using GPS for the harvest. Um, and I also hope to get tomorrow's video recorded today as well, which means that I need to really quickly go through comments after this, after I'm finished recording this one, just to make sure there's no extra rules that I'm missing. And then uh, just jump straight into recording that. Uh, the next prob the next problem is what am I going to do in tomorrow's video? Well, I'm going to do exactly what I said I would do today. Which is, or what I'm planning to do, because of course a rule could change my plans. The plan is to get work, get mowing in field 15 and um, start working on the hay in there. If you're wondering why I decided, by the way, to put field 15 in grass and field 19 in canola, it's because it's because uh, field 15 is actually slightly smaller than field 19. I worked this out during the the end of today, yesterday's stream. Um, if I set this to field work and just use the calculator mode here, field 15 is seven hectares exactly. Field 19 is 8.24, so I gain a hectare and a quarter by swapping those two fields around. So I've got an extra hectare and a quarter of canola over what I would have had had I used field 15 for canola. On the flip side, I have slightly less grass, but the amount of uh, bales that I'll get out of field 15 is going to be insane regardless, so I don't think that's a big deal. Um, if you're wondering why on earth I put oats into this field, it's because, well, we need straw bales. And I'm not planning right now on selling any, but I might. Um, if we end up with like a hundred or so, I might sell some. The plan, though, is to bale up the straw and just stick it all into the what's going to become the bale shed. Um, and the same goes for field 15. That's all going to be made into hay this time around, and it's all going to go into the bale shed. Um, I'm now kind of hoping for no great demand at all until we get around to... <laughs> Um, having the canola done, and then I want a canola great demand, because that'll be, oh my god, just insane amounts of money. Um, but after that, I mean, a barley great demand would be awesome. <laughs> it really would. 
but maybe oats as well actually you know the more crops I have in storage the better um, and I'm gonna quickly jump because I've just realized I forgot to do something alrighty I have done the thing and left the combat and cruise control so it's done a weird thing there that's fine I'll clean that bit up later um, I've completely forgotten what <laughs> I was talking about before I ran off um, but yeah, the plan is square bales everywhere. Uh, I did spot that some people were trying to be cheeky in the comments and trying to get me to do organic only or uh, bale silage only. I've already said I'm not going to accept those rules, so sorry to those of you that suggested them. Not going to happen. I do plan on doing some bale silage. I know that I said, you know, oh, the rule that came out yesterday was really easy because I, you know, I don't. I'm not going to be doing much bale silage. Hello, Dave. I, that Dave, Dave, Dave. Thank you for to whoever just subscribed as I was recording this. Who, who, who am I thanking? Admiral Carter, you have interrupted the video with your notification. Thank you. I have no idea how to turn those off. So yeah, there, there we go. I'm almost surprised that it hasn't happened more often that I got subscribers during the while I was recording. I need to figure out how to turn those notifications off because that is sl uh, mildly problematic. I think I know how, and I think I'm gonna try and get it sorted before the next video just in case. Um, but yeah, I'm I am planning on doing some bale silage before. People complain that Dave, you've got you've got a rule in the rules now that isn't going to affect you. It will, just not immediately. I do plan on doing bale silage later on for the animals, but for now, it's much cheaper and much more effective to just do um, forage wagon silage, especially because the fields or field 15 is just it's just too big for me to do silage bales. Once I get something like you know field. Um, 16 or 17 or 10 or 12 or something like that then I will definitely consider get getting a, a round baler with a wrapper but until then nah not gonna happen and I'm not gonna make square bill silage that's just that that is just evil incarnate in my eyes um, I know that it's in game but I hate it um, but yeah, the plan for today is we're going to see how far I can get in basically half an hour on this field. It's probably going to, only going to be a couple of headlands because this is a huge, humongous, ginormous field. Um, and I'm tempted in a way to get course play to do this for me. Um, moving forwards like while I'm doing other videos and stuff uh, especially with the hay work get course play to do this because I can set up a double course to um, well, I can set up an unload course that's gonna be pretty easy something I'd like to do in the future definitely with this field and possibly like fields 15 and 19 once they're really online as, as crop fields full-time and five for the matter, 22 maybe. Um, he's actually set up an overloader course and get an auger wagon. Um, and a, you know, something quite large, probably a truck. And just all, like use the auger wagon into the truck uh, while I maybe drive the combine or something. Because uh, that'd be kind of cool. something that I haven't done much. I know exactly, I know how to do it, I just don't do it much because it's something that I usually kind of leave for American maps. <laughs> um, I think that uh, American maps are a bit more suited to, to automation than, than UK maps. So if I do an America, I, I, here's something I want to do, and I want, I kind of want your guys' feedback on it. Um, is kind of an automation challenge on an American map where I see how automated I can get the farm, while still having work to do. 
So, like, I, I, I know enough about course play to automate about 90% of things on a farm. But there are some things that I would just, by necessity, have to do, like buying new equipment and carting stuff around. Even that, I guess, of course, play. Uh, this isn't good. We've got... Really glad that I don't have crop destruction on, because this would be a mess if I did. We've got a full load of... Uh, oats, and not a full headland. How much are oats worth, by the way? Oats are worth... Oh my god, this is going to be a money field. They're worth slightly less than canola, but if I'm only selling on great demands, this field is going to be insane amounts of money. I might run... Ooh. I might run into problems with storage capacity at the silo. I might need to resort to using one of the sheds as an overflow. I'm not going to use the, sh the grain sheds solely for grain storage, um, because there'd they're just be too much grain and it'd cause problems, but if I need to, I will use them as an overflow if I just plain don't have enough space to hold all the grain. Uh, the capacity is 700,000. That shouldn't be an issue then, ever, but... Getting 10,000 from half, well, two-thirds of a headland is mildly concerning. Um, it is a mild concern when I get that much from a headland. Even more of a con even more of a concern is the fact that oats I happen to know produce more straw than they do grain in in farm sim. So this is a this is a straw crop basically. That's why I seeded it. This is going to be an insane insane amount of straw that I'm going to have to bale up. Um, an insane number of straw bales that I'm going to have to deal with. Maybe I shouldn't have grown oats here. Maybe I'll end up with like a full shed and actually having to sell some oat, some uh, bales off. Because I'd like to fill the shed and then kind of any bales that are left over will just be sold off. Is the plan? I've got. I've even got a stacking plan kind of formulated in my head for how to do that. Because uh, I reckon it'll. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it'll work the way that I want. If I get the shed full, I will obviously have to move all the front loader equipment into the. Uh, what is currently the the hall of various trailers? What wouldn't fit into the uh, the the undercover area? But that is that's fine for me. I can move it in there, no problem. Yeah, I think my I think my stacking plan should work at least. <laughs> what we're gonna do at the end of the row here is a bit odd. We're gonna just make a straight 180 and come back in the opposite direction so that the pipe is in the correct direction. Um, which, believe it or not, is realistic. <laughs> um, it's gonna be a tight squeeze, but with no hedge on this side of the field it should be doable. Yeah, this is going to be a really tight squeeze. A possibly too tight squeeze. Can the combine fit? Just about? Question mark? Yes, it fits. Let's go. There we go. Maximum realism engaged for once. It's a bit of a shame there's not a... Yeah, an amazingly beautiful view in that direction and Who's planted corn? Which of the Blumen AI farmers has put corn down in England? Corn cotton. Cotton day. Cotton. Don't get those two mixed up. People get annoyed when you get corn and cotton mixed up for some reason. That's cotton, that's not corn. But who's planted that anyway? But is that a crop that is even possible to grow in England? 
Which, by the way, if you didn't know, Marwell is based on a real, is pretty much a real farm in England, so. That's the basis of my complaint. And also, I don't really want to grow soybeans. You don't really see them grown in England all that much. Beans for baked beans, yes. Soybeans, not so much for some reason. Possibly climate. Um, there's a part of me that wishes you could use those skips as... That's... Ooh, that's something I'd like to see. It wouldn't be realistic at all, but it'd be kind of funny to see a... Uh, a mod that's a skip slash grain trailer. Like, one of those skip loaders that can be used as a grain trailer, that'd be kind of hilarious to use, and it, I don't know how on earth it would tip, but I'm sure somebody could come up with a way possibly involving cables and stuff in real life, so. In game, you can, ju you can just do the tip animation. I guess you could, like, attach it to a hydraulic somehow. Just like well, the hydraulic system underneath. If you're converting a a skip hauler to a grain trailer, I don't know. The thing that annoys me the most, like whether it's, I'd love to use the IT run on a field like this, and just kind of have it a you know have two or three of the big grain bins knocking around the field. But if it's gonna slip and slide like it does, and just not really attach as solidly as it should, then I don't see the point in having the IT runner on a, on a map. Uh, in fact, I think I have... Uh, I think I've uninstalled it. Not entirely sure. Uh, in terms of today's stream, I, th I think I'm going to go with Flight Sim. Um, which I know is going to be a less popular stream, but I... I'm gonna try, this is not gonna work at all, but I'm gonna try and do something cool. Um, if, if if I'm flying something that's not an Embraer, you, you know, you'll know that um, the cool thing that I wanted to do hasn't worked out. So if I'm flying a 737 or an ATR or back in the Cessna or something, um, it means that the cool thing that I wanted to do hasn't quite worked out. <laughs> and I'm holding off on it. Because I want to uh, make a custom livery. Uh, and part of the reason, actually, that I want to make tomorrow's video immediately after this one, uh, including a wheel spin and all that kind of stuff, is just so that I can get some time tomorrow um, where I can say, okay, there's no rush for me to finish the stream because I don't need to worry about, like, having dinner at X time or you know, Landy streaming at X time or whatever, it's just... I can stream for as long as I like, and if I get up early, which... I don't know, I might, who knows? <laughs> the regulars in Discord know this is not going to happen. Uh, if I wake up early enough, not gonna happen. Um, I might even start early and do some stuff, but I do want to... Um, tomorrow evening after the stream, actually stay on Flight Sim, and... Uh, Number one, get my AI traffic working correctly for for uh, VATSIM, and number two, actually start flying on VATSIM, because the b best case scenario for me is that I can uh, eventually start like streaming on VATSIM, and doing streams with actual air traffic control uh, where possible. Because um, it's fine like saying, oh, I'm going to do this and that and the other, and it's just me making stuff up as I go along. But with real air, air traffic control, they'll, there'll be like limitations on what I can do and I'll be told what to do. As opposed to just saying, I'm going to do this arrival into this airport and then land on this runway. Uh, that's not the way that works in real life. And Flight Sim is one of those few, few rare games where I... Uh, as long as it was racing sims actually, racing games I try and do this. I try and emulate real life as much as I can, um, because I just find that more fun. That's why you might notice I use autopilot a lot. Um, it's just, it, it's, you know, 
I am just sitting there doing nothing, but at the same time, real pilots do the same thing, and it is realistic to do. Especially if you're uh, flying instrument flight rules. You just tell the GPS what to do and you run with it. Anyway, back to farm sim talk. We are full again in the combine, and... Uh, yeah, we've got one and a half headlands done now. Roughly. This is going to be a very profitable harvest when we get, get the great demand. This is going to be insanely profitable once we get the great demand. The question is, when are we going to get the great demand? Because that is uh, really what's going to limit our money for now. Because um, we are in debt of 50,000? 65,000 euro. So the first 65,000 I get from any great demand is going to have to go to paying off the loan. That's got to be the priority. Um, the next however much is going to be just stored up and used as excess funds. And I know there's a rule in the wheel somewhere that is that I that uh, means that I need to have 10,000 positive at all times. If that rule gets picked tomorrow, um, it'll only kind of go into an into effect once I hit 10,000 positive. Uh, which I know is cheeky and kind of getting around the rule in a way. But I don't want to have to pull out more of a loan just to have a number at the top of the screen that says 10,000 plus. Because then, I, you know, I'd have to pull out an extra 10,000, be 75,000 in debt, and actually have, you know, negative 65,000. Or negative 61,000, however much. Uh, in the meantime, and in this timeline, the actual timeline, we need to empty the trailer. And... The yeah, we've got one full trailer load already. Wow, we've been, we've not even done two headlands, and we've got twenty thousand liters of oats. Do we have any in storage? We got fifteen thousand, so we doubled the amount of oats already in twenty minutes, give or take. This is gonna be silly. This is gonna be very silly indeed. I'm fine with it, but it's going to be silly. Really glad that my phone doesn't vibrate when it's on charger, because I've currently got it sat on top of my PC <laughs> case. And that is made of metal, and that would be many, many noises. That would be extremely loud noises. So that's that empty. And I'm going to tab over to the, the combine once we get to the bottom of the field here. Worst case scenario right now, as odd as it sounds, is getting an oat great demand. Because I, the best the best thing that could possibly happen would be the great demand for oats comes in once we've got the entire field done. Or the same with canola. Like any great demand we want to have, a, or I want to have, a quite largeable, largeable. A quite sizable stockpile, a quite large stockpile um, of spare crop so that when a great demand hits, it is just going to be pure pure profit and I don't need to worry about, you know, doing work. I can just rush trailer load after trailer load and I might even, like, to min-max it to the, the, the biggest extent, I might even put out more of a loan and rent a truck and a big old trailer um, just to get as much to the sell point in one go as possible so that when the price does dump it dumps like after a large amount and I get the most out of every price point because every time you unload into a sell point the price does re um, decrease um, and if I'm living from great demand to great demand, which great demands in farm sim are regularly are, are so they usually happen when you don't want them. 
um, or don't happen when you do want them, so I'm not expecting many. I want to get as much money as I possibly can per great demand, so that I can, you know, in in the fallow times between them, have money left over to spare and, you know, get extra fields, get probably more grass fields, because the best thing I could do is, like, stockpile um, straw and hay to set off if there's an emergency, which is why I want to stockpile straw and hay, and stockpile um, silage over the BGA, which I still haven't bought. That's going to be one of the first things I buy um, with the great demand money from whatever great demand we get in it, we get first, uh, before I even pay off the loan, and then, you know, put some pits into the BGA, and then it'll be loaned, because BGA is, is just free money, basically, especially with grass. Um, and after that, then, it's just going to be trying to make money and live from great demand to great demand. Uh, and by the way, I'm not going to put hay or straw into the great demand rule or silage because I will end up then having like grass fields that are just left forever. I quite like doing all the fields as much as possible. I know that I could have done some hay in the rain even though it makes no sense. Um, but I felt like it made no sense so I didn't. Um, so the plan is to just try and get as much stockpiled as possible so that if money does end up really tight that I can sell off some bales. Um, plan A is going to be never selling bales. But plan B is desperate times call for bale sales. Uh, so that I don't have to force a great demand to exist, because I could. I, you know, I, I could edit the save game to force a great demand for whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, but I'm not go I don't want to do that, I don't want to... That is the absolute last resort. If I'm allowed to sell bales and silage, then I can try and make enough silage to just kind of take over without needing to buy it alone, with seed costs and whatnot, and that shouldn't be too much silage, and, you know, hay and straw, if I end up with massive excesses, I can just sell them and do that for, for profit. Um, but the plan isn't to spam. The plan is not. The, blah, 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 blah. the plan is not to spam silage and just min-max this map. Because I do that too often. As I'm, I figure out the silage is basically infinite money, and I min-max. The plan is to try and live from great demand to great demand. I'll be using silage as a crutch. I'll be using hay and straw as kind of small niblets of profit here and there. But you guys know hay and straw bales don't tend to bring in so much money. So I, I don't see that as cheating all that much. Just making use of what I've got. Um, especially when I do plan on getting a corn header and trying to feed the pigs um, with the crops that are available. So I will need to get a corn header and get some corn down. Um... You know, I will need to at some point get a small field ready for potatoes or sugar beets. It'll be probably two or three will be the, the field that I use for that. They would be the ones that make most sense because they're quite small. Um, and it will probably be sugar beet, maybe field 20 if I'm feeling sassy. Um, so, you know, I do tr plan on trying to do as many crops that you would maybe see in the UK as possible. The reason that I'm ruling out potatoes is just because I remember um, my start on Felsbrunn and the fact that I spam potatoes and that harvester, while fun and while derpy, is slow and it doesn't make for good YouTube. Um, although I guess I could course play it. I might consider potatoes actually. But. Hmm. The problem with potatoes is you do need a specific planter. With sugar beet, you can just use a corn planter. So it reduces the amount of equipment I need. I think sugar beet would probably be a better option. Just thinking about it. Uh, the fields 18, 19, 15 are just ruled out for, <laughs> for sugar beet or potato uses because they would be never-ending harvests. Um, 
the fields are just too big to do. Well, maybe 15 for sugar beet with the, uh, the Holmer. But the problem there would be trying to store all the beets that I'd get out of it. Because I don't know... I know that it works on some maps. I don't know if on this map you can store sugar beets in the silo. Um, it might tell me. No, you can't. Okay, so yeah, that would be a prob a problem. Unless I were to get a bog standard in game silo and store sugar beets in that, in which case the limitation and the big problem would be um, storage capacity. This is a conundrum I have when it comes to potatoes and sugar beets. I could also box them up and just put them into the bale shed. If all comes to all. Or if all came to all. That would be kind of option C, but the boxes tend to be a bit... In FS17 at least, they tended to be a bit wonky and sometimes pinged out of existence. I got stuck in the ground. I don't know. But uh, we are coming up to the end of the episode here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this combine full one more time, empty it one more time, and then we'll call it an episode. In tomorrow's video, I will have a wheel spin, and we will, hopefully, <laughs> plan A is to uh, do some mowing with the fast truck. I was going to use the deer, but actually the fast truck I've not used on videos in videos in a little while, so we will do some mowing in the fast truck and uh, see how we got on there see if we can get all fi field 15 mode if we do great then I'll get in in there with the tether and we're just gonna get as far as we possibly can with haymaking because uh, we do need more hay for the cows I know that I've done mowing recently uh, in a video but that was at the small mower field 15 is a big mower kind of field so I'll have the full butterfly set up out on the fast track Let's combine full. The, we need the John Deere. There we go. I always tab in the wrong direction. Every single time I, I try and go to this deer, I tab in the wrong direction. Um, or, I guess use the arrow buttons on the Xbox controller. I'm not sure how to refer to that. But I go in the wrong direction regardless. I think three headlands is probably going to be enough on this field. Four might be... A good idea, but I, I don't know. I'll just I'll decide when it comes to streaming it. Um, because the joy is we now have multiple jobs we can do, um, and this field isn't going to need. Yeah, it's it's just going to need basically reseeding direct onto the stubble, um, so I can in theory course play that. We're kind of in a, a good situation now, now that all the ploughing's done. Where, um... Yeah, fieldwork is going to go a lot faster. But that is going to do it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe. And goodbye.